Okay, we have our final lesson for unit one, lesson eight, and it's about the slope of lines. So this should be a review from your algebra one class or whatever math class you took last year. Um, we're gonna talk about the slope formula, which is right here. So remember slope is rise over run, or it's the change in y divided by the change in x, or remember it's the distance traveled along the y-axis divided by the distance traveled along the x-axis. And when you're finding the distance, you are finding the difference. So it's the difference between the y values divided by the difference between the x values. Okay, and this is not given on the formula or the theorem sheet. So you need to memorize that. Hopefully you already have that memorized or you remember that from your Algebra 1 class last year. Parallel and perpendicular lines, these are theorems, so they are on your theorem sheet to remind you, but if you have parallel lines, then their slopes are going to be equal to each other. So two non-vertical lines have the same slope if and only if they are parallel. All vertical lines are parallel to each other. Um, parallel lines, L and M have slope of four, so here's L and here's M, so they have the same slope. We can use these symbols right here to indicate parallel lines. It looks kind of like a V, um, not an arrow key, but an open V, or you can do a closed V, but it's a little bit different than your arrow, but that indicates parallel lines. Um, here, perpendicular lines, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes are negative one. So if I multiply, oops, the two slopes together, I'm going to get a product of negative one. So slope P is equal to negative one fourth. Our rise is negative one, go down one to the right four, so it's negative one fourth. And then our slope of L is we're going up four over one, so it's four over one. And when we multiply those together, we get negative one, so therefore, P and L are perpendicular to each other, or P and M are perpendicular to each other. We can also refer to slope as a rate of change, right? How Y changes in relation to how X changes. Your slopes can either be positive, negative, zero, or undefined. If it's positive, it's like you're walking up a hill. You're going up and to the right. Remember, we read from left to right. So a positive slope is walking up the hill from left to right. The negative slope is walking down the hill from left to right. So it's going down here to the negative. A zero slope is a horizontal line, right? So you're not walking up or down. It's a zero slope. And an undefined slope is like a wall. It's so steep, it's neither, it doesn't have a positive slope or a negative slope or a zero slope, we call it undefined. It's a vertical line. Okay, moving on, let's calculate the slope between each pair of points. Uh, again, if you forget, we use the letter F, M for slope. You might want to remind yourself of what that formula is by rewriting it up here on the top of your page. We'll do the first one together. So our slope is... I can rewrite this as x1, y1, and x2, y2, right? So this point is x1, y1, and this is point has the second coordinate for x and the second coordinate for y. So your subscript is which coordinate it is. So I'm going to take the second coordinate of y, which is 7, minus the first y coordinate, which is 5, and I'm going to take the second x coordinate, which is negative 1, and subtract the first x coordinate, and now you just do the math, the 7 minus 5 is 2, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, therefore the slope between points A and B is negative 1 half. You might want to pause now and do the next two examples on your own, and then you can come back and see if you did them correctly. So go ahead and pause and try them on your own. Okay, if you paused and you did them on your own, you should have gotten undefined for the second example and then positive 2 for the third example. So the slope between C and D, when I calculated this, I did 5 minus negative 2. That double negative turns into a plus, so it becomes 7. And then I have 9 minus 9, which is 0. Anytime you get a 0 in your denominator, you cannot divide by 0. Therefore, that's when we know it's a vertical line and it's undefined. 
Or if you think about it, if your x values are the same, we go to the right nine units, we go down two to get letter C, we go right nine units up five to get letter D, that's gonna be a line that's straight up and down. So when your x values are the same, then you get a vertical line. So therefore we know the slope is undefined. And then if you didn't get the last one, just check it out here and see what your error was. Okay, using letter A to move on to letter B. It says determine if any lines A, B, C, D, or E, F are parallel or perpendicular to each other. Okay, if the lines were parallel, we would have the same slope. And we don't have any same slopes, therefore we don't have any parallel lines. If lines were perpendicular, then that means we would take slope, one slope times the second slope, and it would equal negative one. So I'm just saying, subscript is just saying one slope, and this is like distinguishing between a second slope. So it looks like I have that. The first slope is negative one half. This last slope is positive two over one. And when I multiply them together, I do get negative one. We call that these, these are negative reciprocals of each other. And when they are negative reciprocals, negative one half and two are negative reciprocals, we have perpendicular lines. So line AB is perpendicular to line EF, right? Those are the two letters. We have line EF and we have line AB. All right, moving on. Example two, it says find the missing coordinate for letter A, or for point A, given that we don't know the X coordinate, but we know the Y coordinate of five, and we know that B has a coordinate of one seven. If we wanna make AB perpendicular to CD, and CD has a slope of negative three. Well, the first thing we wanna do is to say, okay, what does the slope of AB need to equal? So the slope of segment AB, if CD equals negative three, then remember I have to do negative three times the slope of AB. Remember M means slope. The slope of AB has to equal negative one. So I divide each side by negative three. So the slope of AB has to equal positive one third because double negative turns into a positive. So <clears throat> when I use my slope formula, I have to get a value of positive one third. So let's use our slope formula. We're gonna put in a value of x here because I don't know what that is, but it is the x coordinate, which is why I'm going to replace that blank with the letter x as opposed to the letter y. So remember my slope formula, it's up here at the top of the page. If you forget, we take our difference in y's divided by our difference in x's. So we take our y2, remember this is x sub 1, this is y sub 1, this is x sub 2, this is y sub 2. So we take our y sub 2, which is 7, and subtract our y sub 1, which is 5. We take our x sub 2, which is 1, and subtract our x sub 1, which is x, and we set that equal to positive 1 third. So in algebra 1, we call this a proportion, right, when one fraction equals another fraction. So how do we solve? we can cross multiply. So I'm gonna multiply three times seven minus five. Well, seven minus five is two. So three times two is six. And then I'm gonna multiply one minus x times one. Well, anything times one is just itself. So that's one minus x. I can move the one to the other side by subtracting one. So one minus one cancels, six minus one is five. That equals negative x, but then I have to divide or multiply by negative one. So we have to get x equal to negative five. We can double check it by plugging it in here. So if we get seven minus five in my numerator, which is two, and I do one minus negative five, the double negative makes it change into a positive. So I get two six, which indeed does reduce to the one third. So my missing coordinate for x is negative five. Now how can we make line AB parallel to PQ? Now we know that A 
is negative 5 comma 5, and we know that B is 1, 7, and then we have our two coordinates for PQ. Well, we just calculated the slope between AB. We know the slope of AB is equal to 1 third. I'm going to make it parallel, which means, oh, sorry, eh, wrong answer here. My bad. We're not using the one from above. We're doing the same thing. I'm sorry about that. X. It's unknown. We're trying to find the x-coordinate. We know that a is x5. We know that b is 1, 7. And we were given p and q. So first we have to find the slope of pq, which we do the difference of the y's divided by the difference of the x's. So we get 2 thirds. So now I have to set this equation up so that we find that value to get two-thirds as well. So when they're parallel, the symbol means parallel, and parallel means the slopes need to be equal. So I'm going to find the slope of segment AB, and so I get the difference in my y values divided by the difference in my x values, so 7 minus 5 divided by 1 minus x. And that has to equal positive two-thirds. So we're right back to where we were up here. We have a proportion. We need to cross multiply. And when we cross multiply, we can then solve for x. So why don't you pause and try this algebra on your own and see if you get the same answer as me. So go ahead and pause. So when I cross multiply, remember 7 minus 5 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. Then I'm going to multiply 2 times the quantity of 1 minus x. I distribute the 2 to get 2 minus 2x. I moved the negative 2x to the other side to make it positive. I moved 6 to the left-hand side to get negative 4. So you should have gotten that x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is your answer for this one. If you have any questions on these problems, then make sure you ask your math teacher. Go see any geometry teacher or your math teacher during class. All right, see you soon. Bye.